Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today moves to the southeast, and it's something we had already briefly spoken about uh, during Off the Press with Chris Wandu. It, it is uh, with regards to the sit-at-home order, you know, also called Ghost Mondays in the southeast. Always shocking when you hear people, you know, on a Sunday evening talk about you know, not going anywhere on a Monday because, well, they have an extended weekend. And that is because of the indigenous people of Biafra's sit-at-home order in the southeast. Yesterday, there was also reports of a truck carrying motorcycle spare parts that was burnt um, and, of course, the goods destroyed for allegedly disobeying the sit-at-home order in the southeast. We're speaking this morning with Goodluck Ibem, who's the president, Coalition of Southeast Youth Leaders, who's joining us from Imo State. Good morning, Mr. Ibem. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. All right, Thank so um, there's a lot of you know, reactions to the sit-at-home order. Some people, you know, of course are for it. Some of uh, some others, and a growing number apparently, are completely against it. But it doesn't seem to be changing. So let me first of all start with, uh, you know, what the narrative is from you concerning staying at home on Mondays. Well, the, the issue of sitting at home on Monday, the leadership of um, IPOB have already said that uh, they have cancelled the exercise. Um, now, some criminal elements have now taken advantage and they are now destroying people's properties, harassing people to stay at home. And uh, this is really bad for the economy of the Southeast. Yesterday, uh, we had two incidents where a motor pass by uh, a, a vehicle conveying a motor pass by was destroyed. Another one at Tanambra that was conveying from the vehicle and the, all the goods was also destroyed. So this is really bad for the economy and the image of the service. Um Sorry, when you say the leadership of IPOB has, you know, cancelled the citadel order, um, yes. it, that doesn't seem to be the case because people are still sitting at home. So does it mean that nobody believes when the IPOB says or put out a statement like that because their members don't seem to be, you know, doing or following that statement? And who exactly would you, would you say is the leadership of IPOB currently? Well, the leadership of IPOB is one. Before now, we only have a map of food that had been given their directives. The same person came and said, no more sitting at home. So now the people who are enforcing the so-called sit at home are criminals. Like last Monday sit at home, last week, three criminals went into a police station in Ngokwana, robbed the police station, collected a vehicle from someone, was moving out with that same vehicle. And the, the residents have to call on the security agencies who came, and those guys opened fire on the security agencies. There was exchange of fire, and three of them were killed. So what is happening is no longer IPOB stuff. It's now criminals who have hijacked the exercise, and now are now investigating the people. Okay, so Mr. Ibrahim, if you say that the um, sit at home order, which has allegedly been suspended, has been hijacked, whose yes. responsibility then is it to reverse that hijack? Well, I didn't get you. I said, whose responsibility then is it to reverse that hijack? Is it a state government? Because we've seen that their press statements, you know, almost mean nothing. You know, the press statement asking people to go about their lawful act activities has had not, you know, much of a great effect. So is it the state governors? Is it the leadership of the IPOB? Is it the Ohaneze Indigo? I mean, whose responsibility is it? Who has the influence and authority to ask the Igbo people in the Southeast to go about their lawful activities and they listen? It, it is the responsibility of the government to give people directive on what to do and to follow it. But the security agencies have not been living up expectations. So that is why the people are afraid and they refuse to come out. Because of there is a lacuna between the people and the government. So 
So that is the challenge. The government, the state government, the federal government should stand up and live up to its responsibilities of protecting the people. So I, I want you to help me play out a real life scenario with the law enforcement agencies actually doing their jobs. Um, are you expecting, you know, the um, um, IGP to give an order to police commands across the southeast, order them to be stationed at, you know, um, public places such that when these IPOB or um, Ghost Monday hijackers come out to disrupt business activities, then you have law enforcement agencies on standby to checkmate it. Is that what we're looking at or what do you have in mind? There should be a patrol team. Patrol team, okay. Yes, yeah, of the security agencies. Like where that those vehicles were destroyed. There was no presence of security anywhere. Hmm. So so do the security so, agencies also sit at home on Mondays? Yes. That they also sit at home. They're even scared to come out. You know, but, but what, what what does this say then, um, for of the IPOB? Um, can you can you in any way? I know I know you very likely you're not a member, um, but what does this say about the IPOB and their fight in the southeast and their cause in the southeast? I think it is a. I'm asking, what does all of this that we are seeing now? What does it say about the IPOB? What it pays for the IPOB? Yeah. What What does it tell you know of the IPOB? Well, it tells that the IPOB that you have not taken over the reins of uh, uh, of command somehow. For them to give directives and everybody will obey, it means that they are not in charge, which is not good. I, I also so the I, government should work on work on themselves. They should, they should know what to do so that the people they will gain the confidence of the people. The people have lost lost confidence in government. That is just what it does. Hmm. All right. And I also want you to share your views on the the feelings of the people concerning this. Um, I had a conversation with someone last week, and I was, you know, of course, in the same, you know, space, asking at what point are the people of the Southeast themselves going to get tired of sitting at home on Mondays and do otherwise? Do you think that that will happen? The people of the Southeast are already tired of sitting at home on Monday. They are no longer happy to sit at home. Now, there is West African examination, council examination going on, YF examination going on. And they, they, um, every Monday, some students are expected to write the examination. Now, do you expect a student not to write the exam because you are sitting at home? No. Most of these people who are saying they are enforcing the so-called sit at home are not learning. They don't even attend primary school. And now they'll be happy to see others sit at home not writing the examination. So that's different. The people are, are already tired of sitting at home. They want the government to live up to its expectations so that people can go about their lawful businesses. On Monday in Southeast, it's a serious business day for the people of Southeast. What is happening now is as is just like shooting yourself on the leg. It is seriously biting on the economy of Southeast. Yeah, so and that's why it's difficult for me to under, understand um, what exactly the IPOB, you know, hopes to achieve. Because I've described this really as as just you know the the influence or the euphoria of, of power and control. Um, well, does the IPOB they, think that they're achieving anything with this? Yes, they believe that if they sit at home that the federal government will be forced to release Nandikalo. No, I, I, um, Ms. Aibem, I, I don't... I, I want to believe that, you know, they, are, they also have some sense. Because obviously that's not going to happen. So what exactly then do they think that they're achieving with this? Hello, I think that you said. I'm saying I, I want to believe that, you know, the IPOB and their members, you know, can think. They have some sense. And they can see that this is this is obviously not going to get anybody released. So what then would you say that they they are achieving with this? Yeah, to me as a person, I don't think they are achieving anything. We're sitting at home on Monday. So what they should do is to look at other alternatives 
and forget about the statue and wonders. They can't achieve anything political, any political status on a Monday. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. Uh, I, I, I don't see any any sense in that. So, how would you um, say the Ohane Zindibo need to come in to douse the tension in the southeast? Hello, I think I do. Can you hear me, Mr. Iwem? Yes. I can hear you now. Go ahead. So I'm saying, what role do you expect the Ohane Zendigbo, that Igbo social political um, organization yes. there in the southeast? What role do you expect them to play? Is it as a mediator between the state government, between the IPOB? What sort of role um, do we expect that you know organization to play in making sure there is peace and restoration of order in those states? Well, it is. Just I will expect them to play the role of a mediator between the government and the leadership of IPOB. Because as it stands now, what we need is a political situation to the arrest of Nandikano. If this matter is addressed politically, all this tension will doubt. So that is the role I, I expect Ohanes and people to play so that the, the, the zone can move forward. It is not really, uh, uh, it's, it's not easy for people to be sitting at home every day and the, the economy will be gradually going down. So something should be urgently done by Hanese and other stakeholders in the zone so that we can, uh, this, this whole thing can just pass. Yeah, but, but you know, that, that's not very likely um, um, to happen. Um, and, and that's with regards to Namdekano being released, you know, just like that. Um, do you think that the IPOB itself needs some level of control that they seem to have um, lost? Look at, look at the problem now. When IPOB came on board, the, the leverage on the marginalization of the Southeast people to gain the mind of the people. You can imagine. The security sector of the of this entire uh, uh, our country, there is no single person that is on Southeast. So many appointments in Southeast are not uh, considered. Last time, uh, five further universities were approved for the six of political zones. It was only five that got Southeast was excluded. So they worked on the mind of the people, based on the marginalization of the zone. And the people saw that it is true, and now believe them, and now have confidence in what they are saying. So, you have to address this issue is to address marginalization of the zone. So that the, the government, the people can now have confidence in the government. But when you are marginalizing the people of Southeast, and even when they are shouting, you keep marginalizing them, the people will continue to believe in IPOB. So what you're saying that, is what, that, that, that so what you're saying is that even even if there are people who don't necessarily enjoy sitting at home on Monday, they you know somehow also sympathize with the cause of the IPOB. Hello, I think that's it, sir. So what, is, are you saying then that even though there is people who don't necessarily enjoy sitting at home on Monday, they yes. at the same time also sympathize with the IPOB and its cause? Yeah, that is the truth. All right, and, 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 you know, that brings me to the question once again that I asked. Um, do you think that it will get to a point where the people will revolt against the IPOB? Well, the people don't have the will to revolt against them for now. Mm -hmm. Because so what I'm seeing and some views and uh, people don't have the will to fight. They have lost confidence in the government and they just take anything they see as their fate. So that is the problem now. All right. Um, Mr. Ibem, share, share with me what's, what's the conversation like on Mondays across the Southeast? You're in Imo State. Um, when yes. you've had conversations with people, what, what do they mostly say? On Mondays, people don't see it as a normal day to sit at home now. They have adopted to it. When you go around, you see the youth play football in some locations. You see some people cooking, you see some people playing, 
even inside the street, the most the, the, a very remote area, the shop is closed down. Mm. So it is now becoming a way of life, and which is not good. It is gradually keeping the economy of the zone. People don't complain again. They just sit at home because it's, it is not a normal thing. How would you also interpret the failure of um, government and its security agencies to enforce, you know, the freedom to move about lawfully on Mondays? Um, because the guest that we had earlier had said that it, it's the Nigerian government's responsibility to assure the Nigerian people that they are safe to come out of their homes on Mondays, um, regardless of any order by the IPOB. So how would you describe the failure? Or, or, you know, what, what would you say about the failure of the government to give that reassurance to the people? Because there's enough of the security agencies. There's the NSCDC still in the southeast. There's the DSS, there's the army, there's the police. There's all sorts um, in the southeast. Um, and so, but the federal government has failed to use these security agencies to ensure or to reassure the people of the southeast that they are safe. Well, look at look at the challenge now. Those places that people normally come out from, you see some criminals standing at the junctions of most of those places, collecting phone, collecting money, collecting people's uh, uh, properties because they came out. Those places are not security agencies. You only see them in in major roads, those streets and whatever, you can't see the security agencies there. So those places you see them are not really important. The major places are at the remote areas. They don't, you don't see security there. And they, those criminals harass people, collect their properties, rob them and all that, in the name of enforcing Snatom. So they have failed. What they are doing, I, I mean, even me, I, I know everybody is indoors, not because they want to. Most people are indoors, not because they want to, but because they can't help it. Is the IPOB, by their actions, aren't they now being oppressors of the same people that they claim to be fighting for? The truth is that the people who are doing this are not the leadership of IPOB. No, it's not. It doesn't have, have to be the leadership, Mr. Ibem. This is why I'm saying so. It doesn't have to have to be okay. the leadership, um, because if the IPOB has also seen that you know the people are groaning, businesses are suffering, um, um, yeah. uh, trucks are being burnt, people's businesses yeah. are being damaged and destroyed on Mondays simply but because they came out and they stay silent. Yeah. Because you might describe these people as, oh, the criminals have hijacked it, but nobody is going to call them criminals like that. They're going to be assumed, you know, it's going to, everyone's going to assume that they're IPOB members, they're ESN members. And so when the IPOB stays silent, when they see these things happening, aren't they, you know, basically being oppressors of the same people that they claim to be trying to save? Well, the people who are doing this are oppressing the people. That is just the truth. I mean, but... We, I mean, I'm going to call them IPOB members. <laughs> I mean, is it, there's no other way because when, when the IPOB sees this, because you've called them criminals, but when the IPOB you know, sees... Do you know that IPOB have their registered members? And they um, have people who are enforcing their leadership, who are criminals, and who are not their members. So I don't describe everybody as IPOB members. They have their members, registered members. So these people are, who are doing this, most of them I have seen, are not their members. They are just criminals. When they move around harassing people in the name of enforcing a statum in, in an organization, they are not members. Well, I have seen most of them. Well, well, when the IPOB sees these things happening and stays silent, it means that it's enjoying all of this that is going on. Don't you think so? Well, I would, I would, I would not read their mind or what they feel or what they think because I believe the statement they made openly that they have cancelled the sit at home. Yeah, Miss Ibem, every now and then, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you probably have done saying, we react to banditry in the north and, and kidnapping and some of all of that. We also yeah. would say that, oh, you know, the federal government has condemned this. Well, we don't believe because, well, this is just another condemnation, you know, from the federal government until we get to see, you know, proper action. 
Isn't that the same thing with the IPOB simply putting out a statement and then folding its arms to watch criminals take charge of the Southeast? Well, I have read two releases or three or three made by IPOB leadership, which who, uh, by Mapo Afu, their spokesperson, that they have suspended Sitatum. Even the family of Nandekan also made a press statement to our occasions that they have suspended the seat at home. But the people, are, most of them are saying, no, we will not agree until we see our leader. Some of them are saying, you see some video moving around, that their leader cannot tell them not to sit at home, that the leadership have collected money from um, uh, the governors and all that, to tell them to go about their lawful business, and people must sit at home until they can be released. Okay. And most of them who are doing this might be members or whatever. But the leadership have made statement, even the family have made statement and said people should go about their lawful business, that there is examination, why examination going on, they wouldn't be a part of uh, the report that would deprive people from writing their white examinations. So, so I don't that the statement they made. So I believe that statement. Hmm. So, Mr. Ibem... I have read it. It's online. Okay. Mr. Ibem, I, I wanted to ask you questions, you know, that poke on the motive for this sit-at-home order in the first place. So, they're saying that they want Inamdi Kanu to be released. Inamdi Kanu has been arrested and has been in the custody of and the that, DSS. Yes? They're even saying that they want to hear him speak to them, not to sit at home, before they will believe it. Well, we, we, we know of that story, but his lawyers have said where they are... They're not allowed to record him, you know, speaking or anything like that. So people in the Southeast already know that they would not be hearing from Namdi Kanu to further notice. But my question is, they're saying that they want Namdi Kanu to be released by the DSS. They want him back home and free. And the way they're going about it is a system at home order that is now hurting the economy of Southeasterners and even doing more harm than good. I mean, David Uhamai, governor of Ebony State, has described that city to order as the worst thing that has ever happened to the Southeast. So what I'm saying is, since it seems that this city order isn't working to achieve the aim at, you know, making sure that Namdekano is released, don't you think they should abandon this, find another solution? You know, maybe consider what they earlier started with the British government trying to get Namdekano out. Because this route of sit-at-home order doesn't seem to be working. Well, I, I didn't get to a question very clear. I am saying that, would you suggest yes. that the IPOB abandon this sit-at-home order as a route yes. to get to the release of Namdikanu? If they abandon it. If they need to abandon it and seek other alternatives to, you know, agitating for the release of Namdi Kanu? I didn't get the question. Uh, she, uh, Warwick, um, good luck, Ibim. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. All right, so my co-anchor is asking, do you think that the IPOB should have a change of tactics seeing that the sit-at-home order is not going to get Namdi Kanu released? It will not get him released. Only political solution can get him released. Sitting at home, I don't see any how it will work to make him to be released. Yeah, so, so do, you think that, that, do you think that they should have a different tactic instead? Yes, they should have a different pattern. They should devise other means, political, legal means, or international uh, um, um, contacts or whatever to release him. And talking about releasing him, do you know if the IPOB, or, um, IPOB are aware that you know, he's facing trial? And he has to face trial. He has to answer for all the crimes that he has been charged with. So you won't just release him because you locked down the Southeast. That's really not how law works. Do you, do, you, do you think these people are aware of the standards when it comes to legal procedures? Well, most of them are aware. Some of them are not aware. But uh, the truth of the matter is the anger of the people are, is on, in the manner he was arrested. They are, their anger is that he was not arrested according to the law. It, his arrest was a kind of extraordinary redemption. 
So that is one of the things that is making the IPAB members to be very angry. Hmm. All right. Good luck, Ibem. Thank you very yes. much for joining us Thank and you. for speaking with us this morning. Thank uh, we you. We wish a great day ahead. Thank you. You know, um, just before we go, I, I think, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same thing that I've said, you know, with regards to um, all of this. It's really just one of the things that he mentioned was seeing that the governors, political and traditional um, leaders um, in the southeast, you, you may not even call them leaders anymore because they do not have the ears of people in the southeast, obviously. There's also a failure of the federal government, and, you know, I said it to Mr... Chris Wandu, that it might all start it's starting to even look like it's intentional to ignore um, these demands in the Southeast. People want to go about on Monday. You have security agencies at your disposal. You don't use them. You instead just you know turn your face the other way. So that it's starting to look like it's intentional to even leave you know the you know the Southeast that way every Monday. Um, but the main point for me is that the IPOB has seen over time that they have this power. And that's what they are enjoying. So when they give these orders, they give these orders for any reason whatsoever. They bought a, a bottle of water. It wasn't too cold. Sit at home next week, Monday. <laughs> um, you know, someone's dog died. Sit at home next week, Monday. They give these orders just because. And they've seen the euphoria. They felt the, 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 the sweetness of power that they have over the Southeast. And that's why they continue to give these orders. They know that they can't achieve anything with it. It's even counterproductive. They know. You know, and one of the questions that I asked a friend of mine you know, a few days ago was, at what point do the people of the Southeast then decide, okay, we are done with this. Um, and we're no longer going to be sitting at home. If the government isn't going to be there for us, we'll be there for ourselves. We've seen what people who dare to do that face. No, well, their, their wares were destroyed. Well, the I, truck I don't yesterday think they was dare burnt. To do that. They, they probably you were know? just unfortunate. But if the whole of the Southeast says to themselves that on Monday we're coming out, they will come out. And a little van of six IPOB members is not going to shut the whole Southeast down. I'm not, I don't want to call for violence or anarchy or anything. Anyway. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it is um, International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies. And we'll be talking about that right after this short break. <laughs>